Hi guys! So today I'm going to show you how to prep for a CPD or critical point dry. First you're going to need this large dish like this and a smaller one and some forceps. You're also going to need a large bowl like this so you can discard your excess alcohol. You'll also need two wash bottles filled with 100% alcohol and 95% alcohol. You'll need two kinds of elastics, a thinner one like this, and one that's a little bit thicker. You also, I also have a couple of these jars that's filled with 100% alcohol that I use for the second soak of 100% alcohol, and I'll show you more about that later. And then you're gonna need these little white labels that I've made myself from paper. And as you can see here, I have two that are matching, two tens, and you wanna make a couple of these. And the reason for those is because you're gonna use them for CPDing with these large cages here. And there's two different kinds of cages, one that's um, empty like this, and one that's sectioned like this. And they come in two different sizes, large or smaller. And you wanna make sure that the lids are nicely sealed and there's no gaps in them or else the specimens can come out. And you can mix and match between the sectioned one and the unsectioned one so long as you have um, two small ones at the top and then one large one at the bottom. And those cages are for large specimens or when you have a lot of specimens at once. For smaller specimens, you want to use these little small white tubes. And as you can see here, I've put some numbers at the top, like this one has 1001, and it comes with a matching label. And I'm gonna show you more on how to use them. These go inside a little baggie like this that's netted and you put them inside here and then you put the bag inside the CPD machine. And last but not least, you're gonna need some specimens. And those are all the materials you'll need to get started on prepping for a CPD. So before you put the specimens in the CPD machine, you're going to need to dehydrate them. So I get most of my specimens at 90% alcohol so that means you have to do one wash of 95% and then one, two soaks of 100% alcohol. And in between each soak, you need to wait about 24 hours. So I'm just gonna pour out the alcohol from this tube onto this dish. And as you can see, some legs uh, and specimens came out. So I'm gonna pick them up with my forceps and put them back. Like so. And I'm gonna take this wash bottle and fill it up with 95% alcohol and make sure to point the nozzle to the side and not directly to the specimen so a head doesn't pop off. And I fill it enough so that when I tilt to the side, uh, the specimens are still submerged. So you repeat this process for the first soak of 100%. Um, but for the second soak of 100% alcohol, I do something a little different just so that I can preserve the amount of alcohol that I use. And I'm gonna show you that uh, later. So now these tubes have been filled with 95% alcohol and need to soak for 24 hours. So when your specimens are done uh, soaking in their first wash of 100% alcohol, they're ready to be put into either the cages or the small white tubes. And here I'm gonna show you how to put your specimens into those cages. So I'm gonna take one that's sectioned and one that's not and show you how to put the specimens inside. So you'll need large to medium specimens or a lot of specimens at once. Um, you don't use anything that's very small or else it can slip out of the cages. And I'm gonna take one of those labels that I mentioned earlier. I'm gonna take two 15s here and I'm gonna take a six as well. Like so. So I'm going to take one of these tubes and I'm gonna pour out all the specimens into this little small dish.
like so. And if anything gets stuck and is too stubborn to come out, you can use your 100% wash bottle and uh, fill it up with alcohol and try pouring it out again. There, and it came out this time. So I'm just going to put all of these specimens into one of these sections. Like so. And make sure to get every leg and head. So now I'm going to grab one of these uh, labels that I made. I'm going to grab this 15, I'm going to fold it up and put it in the corner of this uh, cage so that it doesn't get in the way of the specimens and take this uh, paired 15 and put into the tube with this label. So now I know that that tube with that 15 matches to the 15 inside the cage and that all those specimens will later go inside that tube. Uh, so if you have specimens where they have two large specimens and they're not going to fit inside one section together. Uh, it's best to just split them apart and put each of them inside their own section. And I'm going to show you what to do in this case. It's very simple and straightforward. So I'm going to put, uh, uh, I'm going to put this one inside this section and I'm going to grab the six and fold it up and put it into the corner like earlier and I'm going to take that matching six so now this six in the tube matches to that six in the cage and that specimen goes inside that tube. So I'm going to take another one. I'm going to take this smiley face. There you are. And I'm going to fold it up and I'm going to put it inside cage section and as you can see here the specimen doesn't really fit the wings are too wide so I'm not going to force it in and I'm just going to get a bigger spot like here and I'm going to put the specimen in. So now I'm going to take that matching smiley face and I'm going to put in this tube so that the smiley face label inside the cage matches the smiley label in the tube. And if you have a lot of, either a lot of specimens or a lot of large specimens like this one, you're going to want to use one of these um, unsectioned empty cages and I'm just going to take out the label and pour out everything in my little dish. There's a stubborn one in there so again I'm going to take my wash bottle and fill it with alcohol to try to get it out like so. And now you can put all the specimens into one of these cages all together. Like so. And now I'm going to put the label back into the tube. And I'm going to grab the seven. No, actually, I'm going to grab this 11 and put it inside the cage and take that matching 11 and put it inside the tube. So now I know that 11 in the tube matches the 11 in the cage. So all those specimens with the 11 are supposed to go in the, into the tube with that same 11. So I'm going to finish up the rest. So when you've put all your specimens into these cages and you finish them up, you're going to pile them together with the larger cage at the bottom and the two smaller cages at the top. And you're going to take these larger, uh, thicker elastics and wrap it around like so. And make sure it's in the middle for both the top and the bottom. And you're going to take the second one and wrap it around so that it makes a cross like this. And you're going to put this inside one of those jars that I mentioned earlier that's filled with 100% alcohol. And now we're going to do the second soak of 100% alcohol. And I do this instead to preserve the amount of alcohol that I use. And I can put about 
15 cages in here until I have to switch it out for new 100% alcohol. And now this is just gonna soak for about 24 hours before you can CPD them. So for smaller specimens, you're gonna wanna use these little white tubes that come with that matching label that I showed you earlier. And it's best for specimens like this, where it's very small and much too small to use for the cages. So you're gonna use these white tubes. So I'm gonna take one out. This one says 1001. And I'm just gonna take this wash bottle and wet the, this dish a bit so that the specimens don't dry out when I put them in. And I'm gonna take out the label like usual and I'm gonna pour the specimens into this little dish. This one's a little stubborn, it won't come out, so I'm gonna use the 100% wash bottle again to try to get it out this time. There we go. And now I'm just gonna put it inside this little uh, white tube. And I'm gonna put it in and angle it so that the wings don't get crushed when I put the lid on. Now I'm gonna grab this label and I'm gonna put it back into the falcon tube. And I'm also gonna grab this little white piece of paper here that has a number that matches the number on the top of this uh, white tube. So now I know the specimens inside there correspond to the labels inside the falcon tube. So you might be wondering, what do you do when you have a couple of small specimens in one falcon tube? Well, it's pretty simple and it's pretty straightforward. You repeat a similar process as last time, and I'm gonna show you what to do. So I'm gonna get all of my specimens out of this falcon tube, like so, and I'm just gonna put this label back into the falcon tube right away. And as you can see here, there are four specimens that came out. So I'm going to grab four of these little white tubes and lay them out. like so and I'm going to put one specimen in each um, white tube. You can put up to about two or three in one white tube um, if they're small enough but you really don't want to crowd them because these are meant for single specimens. So now I'm gonna grab these little uh, pieces of paper that have a number on them that matches a number on one of the lids on these little white tubes. So now I know that these four specimens inside these four white tubes all correspond to the same label inside that one falcon tube. And now I'm gonna finish up the rest and I'm gonna show you what to do after. So I finished up the rest of the specimens and I have about 45 white tubes. You can do 45 to 50 of them and they'll fit in the CPD machine. So I'm gonna grab one of those 100% jars and this little netted bag that I mentioned earlier and I'm gonna put all of these little white tubes inside this bag, like so. So now I'm gonna bring up the corners of this bag and I'm gonna tie it up. So I'm going to take one of those thinner elastics and wrap it around and I don't want to wrap it too tight. I want there to be a little bit of wiggle room inside the bag, um, but tight enough that um, nothing can come out. So I'm going to take that 100% jar again of alcohol and this is going to be its second soak of alcohol. And because they're smaller specimens, they can soak for a minimum of um, four hours, but I usually just leave them for 24 hours. So now we just wait for the next day to CPD. Hi. So now that your specimens have been soaking in their second soak of 100% alcohol, they are now ready to be CPD'd. And this is our handy dandy uh, CPD machine. We also have two CO2 tanks on hand at all times. And the second one is there so that when you run out of CO2 in the first tank, you can easily switch into the second tank and continue the run as usual. If you don't have the second tank, that can cause some problems because the run will not finish without more CO2. And then you'll have to stop the run and the specimens inside 
um, won't be usable anymore. So I always have a second one ready to switch into. Um, we also have two valves on our CO2 machines, uh, our CO2 tanks. And the second valve, the extra one, is just so that when you're switching mid-run, you can just close all of them and switch into the new tank for more CO2. And the pressure and the CO2 in this uh, CPD machine won't um, drop or run out. So now I'm just gonna turn it on, and the flip is just on the back. And it's gonna bring you to a start screen. And now I'm gonna show you how to uh, put in your specimens and what programs we use for CPDing. Okay, so after the start screen, it should bring you to a screen like this. So first things first is you go to settings and you're changing the cooling temperature to 15 degrees Celsius, your heating temperature to 40 degrees Celsius, and our pressure is in bars. The main, and I'm gonna show you the programs. So we mainly use two programs, so program one and program two. Program one has 20 cycles, so it's mostly used for smaller specimens, like the ones in those little tubes, those little white tubes. And then program two has 35 cycles and is mostly for larger specimens, like the ones you see in the cages. So it's fairly simple to make your own program based off these two. And I'm just gonna show you, I'm just gonna clear this. And so to title it, you just go to the number, name it whatever you wish. I just named it practice. It's okay, you should see the title up here. Um, so if you wanna fill in your program, just click on this box here under auto to get a check mark. And now you can fill in your program. So we want our speed to be fast and our filler is to be zero. It's okay. Our delay is 120 degrees Celsius, 120, 120 seconds. Speed should be 10 cycles, 20 for program one and 35 for program two, which we'll do for now. Heat should be fast. Speed should be slow at 75%. You also have to change this, which I'll be honest, I'm not 100% sure what it does, but it's been there with the programs and might as well do it. So you just click on it and you can change it to 0% for program two and 50% for program one. So we'll keep it at zero and it has to be green. So press okay. And everything should be here, 15 degrees Celsius for cooling, 35 cycles, uh, 40 degrees Celsius for heating, should be in bars, and you should be ready to go on CPD. Now that I've showed you the programs that we use, you're now ready to put in your specimens. So I just take off this lid, grab our specimens by the elastics, and let them drip out a bit. Next is alcohol in there. Good. And now you can put it in, just slide it down. Good. Make sure it's nice and tight. You don't want CO2 to run out on the sides. Good, and the CO2 tanks are on. So do a double check that the program's right. So this is one of the cages. So it's you make sure it's 35 cycles. It's all good. And now you can press start. And now your CPD run should go all the way However, we do have an issue during the heating stage. There's an error that pops up. So I'll show you that when we get to it. Uh, in the meantime, I keep a little log here of how many runs I've done on this tank. And I can usually go about 15 runs or so uh, until I know I have to switch out soon. So this is our sixth run. And now, you just wait. So for our CPD machine, after about two hours during the heating stage, there's this yellow error that pops up in the corner. And if this happens to you, no worries at all. 
all you do is tap on the little box, it should go away, and then you just manually gas out yourself. There you go. Um, it doesn't happen to all CPD machines. Um, most CPD machines should just go through the entire run and gas out by itself, but for this one we'll have to manually gas out. So as you can see here, the pressure is now at 1.1 bar, and at this point you can stop the CPD. Uh, it takes a long time for it to get to one bar, and um, you can stop it now because the 0.1 0 .1 bar really won't make much of a difference to the specimens. So you can just manually stop it here, turn it off at the back, and you can open this up and grab your specimens. that's one CPD run. So now that I've showed you how to put in your specimens for the cages, I'm just going to show you what we do for the little bag with the white tubes. So I'm going to go to programs. I'm going to choose the program with the 20 cycles. Okay. Yep. I'm going to take this out. I'm going to take a little bag. Let some excess alcohol drip out. Good. And I'm going to put uh, this part in first so that when you close it with the lid, it doesn't get caught. Grab it from this side and try to shimmy it in. Don't try to force it in. Okay. Good. Just gonna close this piece now. And now I'm going to double check to make sure it's right. And I'm going to press start. So as we saw before, the pressure is now at 1.1 bar and now we can stop it manually. Turn it off from the back. <laughs> I know we just And we take out, just shimmy it out. Go. Close this. Turn off the CO2 tanks. Those are the steps for the CPD machine. So now that your specimens have all been dried, they can be put away back into their tubes with the correct label. So I'm just going to take off these elastics and I'm going to lay out the cages like so. I'm going to open it up. So I'm just going to pour out everything from this falcon tube onto my work surface, like so. And as you can see here, I have a number that says number 15. So I'm going to search for that matching 15 inside these cages, which I've easily found here. So that means all the specimens in that section 
correspond to the label inside this falcon tube. So I'm going to put all the specimens inside here, like so. And you want to make sure and check the corners that you didn't miss any specimens or legs or heads. There we go. So now I'm going to take this label and put it back into the falcon tube. So now I'm going to try to find the cap that matches the label on the outside of this falcon tube. So, which I found right here. And you're going to repeat this process until you've put all your specimens away into the right falcon tube and label. Now for the smaller specimens and the white tubes, I've laid them all out here so it's easier to pick out the ones that I need. And I'm going to pour out all the labels onto my work surface like so. And I'm going to flip over those little uh, labels with that matching number. And now I'm going to grab the little white tubes that match those numbers. Like so. So this means all of these specimens inside those three uh, white tubes are going to go inside uh, the falcon tube. Like so. And I'm going to put them away back into this little container, making sure that I keep uh, that matching number with the white tube. So now I'm going to grab this label and put it back into the falcon tube and try to find a cap that matches the outside label. And I'm going to repeat this process until all the specimens are put back into the proper tube with the proper labels. At the end, all your specimens are nicely dried and ready to be mounted. If you want to learn how to mount these specimens, go watch Jeff's other video and subscribe to his channel. Thank you!